So where is this sister's dad? I'm sure we have a scissors here. Let's wait till someone's here. Let's see. So there's one person here. So I'm going to, hey, Easton Music Ministry. Hey, Rip and Tip. Hey, Gavin. I got this package from, that I want in a giveaway that I'm going to open. And it's addressed to Muskie Hans, even. And it's from South, it's from Friendswood, Texas. So I think it's a giveaway I won from the old Vassar. And I'm going to open it up. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, you should go check out his channel. He does a lot of good pond bass fishing. So I'm going to open it up with the scissors and see what's in it. The first thing in it are these BMC drop head hooks right here. And they're number four ot hooks. You must hook the plastic to the front piece and put put this hook to the body of the worms and they're weighted at a 16th of an ounce so your bait can drop down some. I'll try these out for bass fishing. I'm not like a hardcore bass fisherman as you can tell by my videos. The next thing he sent me were these Zoom Swimming Pearl Super Flukes. These look like good baits. They'll definitely catch some bass and other things so I'll definitely try these out. Hey, Mr. Hard Charger, I'm just opening the giveaway. And the next thing I got are these Yum Dingers, and they're like the smaller size ones. These will definitely work well in my pond. Like, I just had like five inch, the five inch Senkos the other day, or five inch Yum Dingers, or what, big bite bait versions, I actually think they were. Hi, Jessica Bell, I'm doing pretty well. But these four inch versions I know are really good early in the year for bass. So these will definitely catch lots of large mouth in my pond. I'll definitely be catching fish on these. I'll definitely catch some fish on the swimming fluke either. And I got these crab bugs. So I'll try these out. I don't, these might work good for smallies in the river. I'll try these out when I'm fishing on the river, which I usually fish for muskies for smallies. So they're definitely smallies there. So I'll definitely try them out. Then I got the Strike King Mini King. I'm doing pretty well. Hey, look. Thanks. That was from a couple years ago. I think that was like 42. I caught that on the on Pelican Lake in western Minnesota. Hey, Jonah, don't use that S word in here because it just goes to the spam. So here's this Strike King Mini King. And here's some Zoom 5-inch Pearl Flukes. I'll definitely try these out. And here are some Cabela's. Four inch green pumpkin blue flute crawfish. I'll have to try these out too. Yeah, you sent me a lot of white lures. I like the white flukes though. They'll definitely work. These are green pumpkin color blue though. And you sent me some Tuak Gamakatsu plastic hooks. No, I haven't received your package yet. I'll I'll message you or show you when I get that package. It should be here sometime soon. I'll let you know when it comes and I'll do your challenge. Here's a Strike King bait. Like a swimming jig is this? A mini jig? Do you guys usually put a trailer on these jigs like this or do you just fish them like this? Because I see people fishing both ways. I'm not a very big bass fisherman, so I don't really know how people. Yeah, that turkey hunt did not go ideally. At least I managed to get the turkey. That's something that matters to me. Like, it was only like 30 yards away in the wide open when I shot it. You use those crowds as a trailer? 
I'll try it out with the smaller cross then. I know some people just use like a curly tail as a trailer on some of these too, which I probably have some sitting around, but. All right, thanks, Dylan. And we got the Strike King KBD square bill. This will work really good in the, hey, Sunshine. Cooper, how are you doing today? Okay, I'll try that out. I don't fish a lot of these jigs, so I'll try it out. Creature baits for trailer. Okay, I'll try them on that type of jig. And I got the Strike King KVD. This will work really good in the lower. You usually use peanut butter fouls for my fishing. I am currently... Yeah, this KVD crank will definitely work good for walleye and bass in my river. I'm excited to, I'll definitely be using this. And that's what I got in here. I know we do really well on the river by me on smallies and walleyes on these square bill crankbaits. I don't know why, but on the lower Wisconsin, they seem to, they seem to dive up the right depth to cast. So this will definitely be used in the river down there. So I'll try out that out with these crawls using them as a trailer. Is there an old bathroom sticker in there? Yes, there is. This will go on my boat. This will definitely go on my boat. It just with the mystery tackle box stickers. Like I'm to the point with the mystery tackle box stickers. Like I just like buying them for the surprise. And like I've tried to slam. The last, I need to get some stickers made for my channel. I tried to slam like the last three mystery tackle box stickers boxes that I've bought, and I've only caught a fish on like one or two of the baits from each of the box. Like this month, I got the trout box, and the only fish I caught on it were was a bass. Yeah, I was on Yakin with Sarah's live stream a couple weeks ago. That was pretty fun. So seeing as I'm talking here, I'm gonna I bought these spoon blanks the other day off eBay and I to make some trolling spoons. So they're pretty easy to make. All you do is take this and then you can get like this flash tape or you can get these tape like this for it. And you can cut the tape to a piece and you can You can put them on. I'm doing pretty well. I'll just open a giveaway. And now I'm just chatting. So then you have the tape here and you can take the spoon and you like put it angular on the spoon. And then you have like this red color and or you can put whatever color you have and trim it up. You're thinking about making your own chatterbait? I've never made my own chatterbaits. I've just made some spoons and spinner, a bunch of spinners and some spinner baits. Like I have some spinner bait heads here that I molded for musky spinner baits. And I can put blades and stuff on them. I actually need to buy swivels to finish them up though, so. That will have, I still, I haven't got around to ordering the swivels for them to do that. So, yeah, you just take the spoon and I have a split ring pliers here and you can just take the split ring and put it on the spoon. And then you can get a treble hook, which I have a variety of sizes of. I think these are size twos. Yeah, northerns are frustrating for bass fishermen because you don't use leaders for bass and they always bite your baits off. And like in Wisconsin, there's pike everywhere. So you end up catching a lot of them. So 
it's hard to avoid them. Like whether you fish for walleyes or muskies or bass, you still seem to catch pike. So they just seem to swim around and wherever there's food they're at. And then you can just assemble the hook onto here and then you have a trolling spoon, which I will try out. Yep, Northwest open season is still here. Like here's the flies that they troll with on Lake Michigan. Like this is one I made. And you like put these, rig these up with 50 pound fluorocarbon, which I have here. And then you rig them up to a flasher, which I can grab one quick. So You have a flasher like right here, which is a spin doctor. And then you have the fly attached to the spin doctor. The walleyes are super skinny in Denver because they can't keep up with the trout. I usually just fish for walleyes on the Wisconsin River, and the walleyes are usually thick enough. There's just a lot. I just get a lot of short ones. But then you like hook the fly up to the flasher here and the action of this flash from this flasher gives the fly its action because this spins in a circle and this is what people troll on the great lakes and this is a fly that i made i done and did some trout fishing yesterday and i made some trout fishing videos which i'll probably be posting in the near future and I caught like 10 of them. Like none of them were bigger than like 15 or 16, but it was still fun to get out. And here's a big Galdang diver that goes down to like 100 feet that I have. How are you doing, Larry? Has, it, has anyone else been out fishing lately? I was going to end up turkey hunting, but I happened to get my turkey. So I wasn't out turkey hunting for that long. So. Then I just ended up going fishing yesterday. And like, here's the spinner baits I have. I don't have all the stuff to actually make one. Start up a do it yourself channel. I don't know. I like making some of my own baits. Like, I don't have a ton of time to make them, but I still definitely make plenty of them. So it's just what I like to do for fun in my spare time. I guess I can show you how to make a trolling fly. So you can make, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like you post whatever you want to, to your channel. And if people like your, some of your stuff, they'll watch your channels. So like for a salmon fly, you want to cut one piece of the main fly color like three inches. This is like a some type of green. I don't know the exact color. And then you cut your secondary color, which or this one will be white. This white's kind of beat up though. Or this is like a holographic white, a little shorter. And then you take some tape which i have sitting right here and you pull out some tape which it's better if you have masking tape than this tape which i have up my room and you can tape the fly colors together which this tape is just a mess. So you can take like this base, this secondary color and tape it to this pr primary color. here who's following
Then you have the two colors taped together. And then you need a longer piece of tape. Which I have here. Oh, I thanks for stopping by, Lubaka. I appreciate it. I look forward to doing the challenge with you. Challenge that you challenge me to too. That should be fun. I've been doing a lot of challenges though. I enjoy doing them though. I tried doing this one DIY alert video challenge, which is really tough for me though. So Oh, he's mad, actually. He wants attention right now, so. He wants some food, probably. I don't think we have any canned cat food, so he probably wants that. My girlfriend's cats are actually even more bothersome, or about equally bothersome as him. Like, he meows all the time, and then you, like, take the tape and roll it up. Whereas her cat just constantly... Like, want to play and run around. So then you, like, get this together. And you can take thread, which I have here, and wrap it up on this body part that I have. And I have, just have a fly vice with a fly-making thing with that I'm wrapping it up with. And then you just wrap it around enough times. And I probably should put clear coat or I'll probably use crazy glue to hold it together. I still want to figure out how to actually fish these, right? Because last year, I only think we caught one fish on these flies. Like, I couldn't get any production on my flash or fly rigs. Like, one of the smaller flies that I made, I caught a bunch of fish on, but not on this type of bigger four inch trolling fly. So like here's it getting wrapped up. And I'm just tying it off and then I'm going to just put some glue on it to hold it together. And then I have my homemade trolling fly. I tried making a couple trout flies too, but the video didn't turn out. But I'm not that big of a fly fisherman. Thanks, Jetwash Outdoors. So then I have my homemade trolling fly here. And my vice just hit the ground hard. And you can like rig it up with this line and then it should spin. And you're supposed to put a couple beads between it and the hook. Like was on this rig that I had out somewhere. So that is how you make one of them. <sighs> This weekend is fishing opener for regular speed, so I don't know what I'm going to be fishing for, but I know I'm going to go and do some trout fishing from creeks and maybe keep a couple, and I'll probably do some regular fishing. Do some fishing for muskies, maybe. I'm not sure. I wish I had some... Do I have any swivels here? I might actually have some swivels here. Then I can make a spinner bait, seeing as we're talking. Yes, I have swivels here, so I can make the spinner bait. Musky and pike on the fly rod. I've never caught one on a fly rod before, but I always wanted to. So here's a spinner bait, which I have my fly vise. And I have a swivel in my hand here. And I have some blades sitting around out here, which I'm going to use. Giant streamer flies. So I guess they're going to use chartreuse blades. So right here's a chartreuse 
smaller blade, which I'm going to put as the first blade on it. So you take this and you have a clevis right here. And I bet these clevises don't fit through very nice. So you kind of have to make these really good fight on a. You've been looking, I've been catching some crappies. I hear you. Like one day it's good, the next day it's bad, but I've definitely been getting some. Like they're definitely around. Hey, LA Team LTC, I'm just was doing an unboxing. Now I'm just trying to come up with things. Yeah, I know. It's not like you can crank on it. So here's a spinner blade, and I put the clevis through the spinner bait. Yeah, I know. I want to catch one on my fly rod. I want to catch a carp on it too. That end is all rough. I don't know why. So I'll take. I don't know. I, I'm going to go musky fishing Saturday or Sunday. So this is being tough. So I'm just going to take some of that and cut it off. Then you take the spinner and you want it to have. So like this side that spin up is out. So you take this and you slide it down onto the wire here. I know the direction is not perfect. And then you have it slide down there, and then you need some beads, which I have some beads right here. And I'm gonna put the 30 pound carp on your fly rod. That would be a heck of a fight. I know I've caught some like 10 or 15 pounders on my ultralight, which are a great fight. And then I'm putting beads, a couple beads for spacers on it. Your fly rod, mine is just a five weight. So then I have this swivel piece, and I actually have a vise right here that I'm going to bend it on. So I'm going to take this. You can't really see very well. And then there's a piece, and it's in here. And then you bet this is an old herder's press that I can use to bend it around. So then I have it bent. Thanks, Elite Team OTC. So then I have it bent here. So then I'm going to slide this swivel on here and then use the pliers I have to bend it. And then I need another pliers to bend it in. So this is kind of rough looking. Okay, sounds good, Easton. So then I have this and I'm bending it. And it's bent here. I'm just gonna cut that off. And then you need a blade, which I think I have some Colorado. I prefer to put a willow blade on back here, but I currently don't have any big willow blades out so i'm just going to put two colorado blades on this which that'll work too which tool this bender tool i don't know exactly what it's called it just says herders washington you Wasega, Minnesota, USA, model 700, patent pending. I was talking to a guy on Craig's, the hammer pliers. I don't even know where I ended, how I ended up with them. They were like in Fritz's, my brother's car when we cleaned it out, and I just ended up with them in my room. So then, yeah, they, they're not the most effective pliers, though. They look cool. So then you take this blade and you have a split ring right here. And you 
take the split ring and you put the pliers in it and you can start sliding it through the blade and then you have it apart and then you can take this swivel and start to slide it through in here and then spin it around Thanks for stopping by, Big D. I appreciate your support. Hey, Bob's Crappies. And then you have the spinnerbait blade on here. How are you doing? It looks like you caught into some nice fish in your videos. Hey, Simone the Lion. How are you doing? And then you have your spinner blades attached to your spinnerbait. And I usually just use cable ties to attach my skirt to here which do i happen to have one here no that's part of one is this the whole one here's the whole one then i have a this skirt material here S simon the lion like simon cowell from american idol And then I have this skirt material, which I just buy in rubber rolls. And I usually just cut it into certain sections, depending on how long I want it. And hey, all around and back again. So then I think we're going to make this one chartreuse in black. So I usually just cut cut it like five, six inches long and keep chunks the same length. Used to catch salmon on with cricket butts, cigarette butts. I wish they'd bite that now. They're pretty smart. So then you like pull on this and it comes apart because it's in a roll. And I don't know where I, I'm a disorganized mess in here too. So then you have this roll here and you can take this and put on, there isn't as many fish in the river now. Whereabouts are you, Jet Wash Outdoors, if you don't mind sharing? I don't think I've stopped by your channel in a while. I'll all your, give your channel a visit after this. You lost 10 subs today? I think I gained a few. My sub count has... Oh, you live in Ontario. That makes sense. My sub count hasn't been increasing as much as it has was, though. Like, I don't know what... My view time has really dropped off. Yeah, like I'll gain like 10 people and then I'll lose like 10 people. It's been jumping around a lot for me. My view time like continuously drop is dropping down too. Like, so then you pull this together. You should use the pliers rather than your teeth. So yeah, like I've been somewhere between 1450 and 1500 subs like the last couple weeks. Like one day my sub count will go up and the next day it'll drop back down. Yeah, that might be why. Hey, Charlene, how are you doing today? I see you're catching some nice carp. And then here's my spinner bait, what it looks like once I finish taking the skirt apart and I have my chartreuse and black spinner bait. Which will catch some big old bass. I actually caught some bass on spinner baits this size. I haven't caught some bass on like double 10 bucktails like the ones I have. Like sometimes they'll be real hungry. This thing's gonna definitely gonna send a lot of vibration. The Colorado blades send out more vibration and the willow blades just send out more flash. 
I don't know. I actually like using the spinner baits with the willow blades for muskies versus the Colorado blade, though. I don't know. Sometimes in dirty water, they make spinner baits like this color to use in dirty water, like an orange and chartreuse blade and like a chartreuse and orange skirt. Hey, record reelers. I was just unboxing the giveaway one where I won a bunch of bass gear, which I should pick up. Yeah, I'm going to put a trailer hook on it. I just currently don't have any trailers on it. Usually I put trailers on my musky spinner baits, but I don't really have any hooks sitting around to use as, I guess right here I could use this hook as a trailer. But then it's really long, and I usually put a curly tail on it. So where's that plastic? I have some plastic junk I could use to, to keep the stuff on too, sitting around here. My lure making stuff is a complete mess because I haven't been around my house. You can go fishing in a few weeks. I've been going out for a while. So I have this, I have surgical tubing right here. And I'll just put that up through it. I don't know, this surgical tubing's a little fine. I'll just cut it crosswise. And then I frequently put like a curly tail grub on these too. So I'll put on like a four or five inch curly tail grub to make these have a bigger profile. A lot of the musky spinner baits come with curly tail grubs on the back of it. So here I put on the trailer with some surgical tubing to hold it on. So here's my musky spinner bait with the trailer. I don't know. I might change this over to a, the inner tube. Yeah, that actually would be really good because that's super tough. This is kind of wimpy surgical tubing. It was free, though, so that's why I have it. The ICP I was running at work, the tubing was going bad on it, so I took some of the junk tubing to use for lure making. Exactly. It Free is always the best. And it's not like I use a lot of the tubing, like a couple feet of it will last me a while, lure making. No, the ICP, I use at work to measure the amount of calcium and sodium and phosphor, and calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium in the soil. It's like in, in couple of reduced plasma unit that like how the elements burn it indicates how much of a certain element is. So like a different wavelength, you can measure different abundances of the different elements. And I'm studying how different irrigation waters change soil properties. So I was using it to measure the amount of sodium and calcium and magnesium in the irrigation waters. So that's why I was using that. So, yeah, thanks, Pastor Kuchin. Thanks for stopping by. I've been watching some of your... <laughs> yeah. I, I know I'm not the best at describing. Here's a big Galdang fly that I once made. I've never caught anything on it, but it's a really big fly I made. <laughs> I don't even know if it'll work. It might work for bass or a pike. I was almost wondering if we used this flash stuff and made it into more like a regular, made it into more like a regular fly if the pike or muskie would hit at this, cause this is pretty flashy looking. So something like, this, if you just made it more like a fly, tied it more like a fly, like this might work good too. Because I know a lot of the hype with musky spinners is to use this flash stuff as skirts. Because originally the skirts were made from like this material here, which is just bucktail. This is one I made. I'm not very good at this. 
Yeah, I have black and red here somewhere. But they were just making from this. This is just undyed hair. This is just straight off a of deer tail. I have like another year and a half left. So it's going to be a little while. Then I don't really know what I'm going to do. Like I'm probably going to... Yeah, I know that it floats. I actually don't like having some spinners like that one. I just was showing you two that I made because when you're like burning them over the top of weeds, they float up and stay high in the water column. So they're really easy to work higher in the water column. Like this plastic material or the flash material that they tend to run deeper. George, you need to partake in the live stream. This cat was being a little crap earlier. He he marked his territory on something in my bedroom. He's kind of an he's being really weird. Oh, and I bought these spinners that are like Panther Martins off of Wish app for like four dollars. Yeah, thanks, Don. Bye, Bob Coffee. Maybe you'll see me on Lake Wisconsin. I don't. Fish out there all that off in the summer. Once in a while, I'll do it. But these are like Panther Martins, which I bought off Wish App, which I'm going to try out. They look like they'll work. The, the only issue I have with them is like right in their body here, they have a really small bead, so they might run together into the lure. But I think these will work pretty well. They'll probably get pretty bent up by a trout, too, though, because the trout always shake their head and roll around, which beats up the spinner bodies. Because some of the Panther Martins that I have, and here's a blue one, and here's a yellow one. This color will definitely work good for trout. And here's, you throw them with a piece of worm. I usually just reel them in. And here's a chartreuse one. This one will be good for catching little bass. The bass like the little chartreuse ones. You could tip them with the worm. Some of the creeks here, you can't only use lures in, though. Do you ever use barbless hooks in Ontario for trout fishing? Or can you use regular hooks? Because I know Canada has some different rules. I caught a couple brookies yesterday. I like catching brookies. Most of the trout I catch are browns, though. Which actually aren't made of, but they do better in our streams. I don't know. They used to require lures to be barbless during the spring catch and release season here, but now they have made it so you don't have to make them barbless, which is kind of nice. But it also, I don't know, every once in a while you get. Yeah, because I know for trolling, some of the spoons come with, I have the hooks out here. Like, some people like the hooks like this on their spoons. And some people swear by these. And I've seen people arguing on the Lake Michigan Facebook page on whether to have these hooks on your spoon or treble hooks. And some people were trying to argue that the single hooks like this have more pressure when you they hook into the fish so you get them hooked better with the single hook whereas and they like allow your bait to have more action whereas other people were saying the treble hook like these two trebles on the spoon would be way better i am not sure which is better it's probably six of one half a dozen of the other But it also may be data dependent because I know sometimes the fish are really picky about the action of the spoon also. There must be a lot of people live right now because I haven't had that many people at my stream. I don't think I've had more than 10 people at my stream at once or people are doing things tonight. Like, I don't know. I don't have much confidence in these single hooks on spoons, though. So you can take this.
You think it's more effective on bar bristle? These ones have to be bent in even. I haven't made that much. I haven't. You don't have to have barbless hooks here, so I guess it doesn't. All my baits have trebles on them. All I know is when I have a single hook spinner versus a treble hook spinner, my hookup rate's much lower on a single hook spinner. I guess I could do that challenge this year, though, where I make a Panther Martin like bait with a single hook and make one with a treble hook and see how much different the hook rate is and just rotate every other cast which one I throw. That would be kind of fun. That would be kind of a fun challenge to do. I don't know what would happen. All I know is when I was trout fishing, probably about 10 for like 80 fish that hit with treble hooks. They were like striking super short. So th that was unfortunate, but I guess that's how it goes. Yeah, I know that's how tight they hold. All I know is driving around with the Rapala on my hook was getting hooked into everything and walking around with it and a hook by without barbs they lose their grip i haven't fished that much with barbless lures i've only and i mainly just fished with spinners like i've still been able to get fish hooked somewhat reasonably on barbless spinners. I know like some people that are diehard trout fishermen, like fly fishermen will only fish with barbless hooks. You use barbless circle hooks. So here's a spinner with a single hook on it, spoon, and I probably should put some tape on it. I should probably just go and finish doing my laundry and stuff because there's only like two people in the stream chatting or three now. Let's see who this third person is. So I have this spoon here and then I have all this tape which I can put different colored tape on. So I'll put some of this silver prism tape on it that I have, which I think I got at Fleet Farm. I'm not exactly sure. But I've had it sitting around for a while. So I take this and I take about the width of this, which is about this much. And then I cut through it. And then I have my chunk here. And then I can take this off and I have the spoon here and then I have my tape on here, which I'm gonna trim off. And here's one side. And then I have my single hook spoon, which I don't know how good the hook rate braid is. Supposedly for trolling for lake trout on Lake Michigan, people like these copper colored spoons. That's the only reason why I bought these blanks because I couldn't find any copper colored spoons on a lot of the places that sell spoons around me. So I decided to make some. So that's why I have these copper colors. It looks like there's not that many people in this chat or chatting right now. So I think I'm going to end this stream. Thank you all for watching. And I appreciate everyone who's been supporting my channel.
These are from some place that I ordered from on eBay. I don't. I think I saw some of those exchange hooks when I bought a Vibrax in the past too. Where did I set these? I'm my lures are a disorganized mess. They just came in the box and they had a piece of paper which is sitting around here somewhere attached to them. And oh, here's what they said. They have come to say fishing tackle component three out. That's all they say. These just came from some place I ordered from. It says the fishing lure tape company in Verona Beach, New York. So like they just sent me a bunch. I just ordered a bunch of prism tape and spoons and stuff from them off eBay because I wanted to make some trolling spoons for fun. Because and they have like stuff to put on the flashers, like I have showing you earlier. Like this, it, it obviously you wouldn't put it on a spin doctor like here, but you put it on this other flasher that I like this game weaver, like this regular dream weaver flasher I have here, or this pro troll flasher I have here. Hey, Kentucky Catman, how are you doing? I just opened up a package that I got from the old Basser, and I was making a few lures. And I made this spoon, and I made another spoon, which is sitting here somewhere, this one. So what do you end up getting fishing today? I was out in my yard moving a pile of firewood we have. So I had to put on sit, sit and watch your stream. It sounded like you caught a lot of cats yesterday. You got a big goose egg. That happens from time to time. I go out every once in a while and don't catch much too. The good days make you the bad days make you appreciate the good days though. I need to get some stickers made for my channel. Like some days you really. St <laughs> yeah, one of these days my girlfriend's going to get hooked when she stays over here. That won't be very good. I actually don't have any hooks on my bed, in my bed right now that I know of. I have this live stream in there because my hut where I make baits is sitting here. I have hooks here. I have a bunch of hooks here. I probably have like 500 hooks here. But And all around my room is decorated with musky baits, which probably never even really see the water. I need a metal detector to go to sleep. I don't think it's quite that bad. But yeah, I need to pick them up. I need to put away all this stuff. You're going to go... <laughs> I've hooked myself many times before. Like 90% of the time I've gotten hooked has been because of a northern... Cause like I've had a northern hit, hit a bait and it's like flipping around and like goes doing not much. What's up full on fishing? I was just making some baits and just carrying now. Like I made a couple spoons and I made a spinner bait. And now I'm just chilling out talking. I guess I could make some more baits, but. Yeah, I've been live for like 50 minutes now. It seems like just hard. You like to just start going live and then it just ends up going on forever. Here's the size of hooks we need. This is, I should probably make a spinner bait with this hook I have. This is like an eight odd hook. 
like you use for tuna or something. Oh, I do have a weight up here. Sweet. I will make a spinner now. I just need to go grab a few. Do I have beads here? Oh, I have some bead, bigger beads here too. So we'll make a spinner. So here's the wire. That, this end is actually already bent. You use 10 knot. And that's a pretty big hook, but it'll definitely work. So what I'll do is I'll drop down one bead down it. Build descriptive tackle. So I drop this one bead down it. And I'll tell you it's better than some live streams, which is like, hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? I don't know. I just want to do, do my own unique things for my channel. So I just ended up making tackle because I don't really feel like talking about other things. I could be talking about data, which would be boring to you. So... And all I did tonight was move firewood. So then I tab this clavis here, which is spinner bait blades on. So you have a spinner blade. And you take the spinner blade here and you drop the spinner blade down on here. And then you take a bunch of beads. No, I don't want to talk about the stock markets. And then you have all these body parts. Like these are weighted in different ones. So then you drop the body parts down here. I don't know how much the body part actually matters. This wire's kind of bent funky though. And you drop this down. And then you have it here. And then you need a weight on it. So you drop the weight down. Then you have the weight here. Then you need to bend this other end right here. Then here's the bent end. You need pliers to bend it around. This is pretty cheap wire. This bait's gonna be really bent up after a musky. This must be the light wire I have. I like Colorado like this one, probably. I don't know, I just like how they spin. I usually do well with the Colorado blades. I really like the Colorado blades for fishing high up in weeds. And I don't know, the willow blades. I don't really like the willow blades. Panther Martin. I don't know. Panther Martins are my favorite trout bait. If you watch my trout fishing videos, you can probably really easily tell that. Like yesterday, all I did in the creeks was when nothing was working, I just kept throwing the spinners and they eventually worked. Like the fish were biting really short. Hi, Deep PXX2. How are you doing? But they were biting like really short, but I. I like their spinners too. The only issue I have with them is the body gets bent up and then they don't action quite right. So then I'll put this in my fly vise. And today I'm just going to use flash skirt because I feel like using the flash skirt, which I'm going to grab. So 
So I got this blue and silver flash material I bought at the dollar store. Which I'm going to cut to the length that I want. I usually just use a cable tie to fasten it on, but I'm not seeing that I have any cable ties out. I probably should go buy some of them. It's a little bit easier. A bunch of chunks like the same length. This is ending up like a mess too. And then I have this stuff all down here in a bunch. And where'd my fly vice fly tying stuff thing go? I need to be better at organization. My thing skills I really lack at is organization. And I just have a bunch of stuff sitting out here that the camera really isn't showing. So like I don't even know where this fell to. And <laughs> what is this? I don't. Oh, I have a good night, Kentucky cat man. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'm. Oh, here this is. So then, here's the here's the string. So then I'm just going to tie it off here. This is just green actual thread from Walmart. I actually bought it because I was trying to do a challenge where I used the, the thread for fishing line. It was kind of an interesting challenge. The I was trying to ice fish with thread and the fish were really wary of it. And I eventually did manage to get a perch on it, but it was, I don't think it was a very good idea. The roll bag elastic, it, it might. I don't think it would work with hair. Like I never got good at tying hair bucktails. And if I did tie one, it would take a while. I think to tie them, you like need to put in clusters of hair at a time and put a lot of bead head cement with it. But I never got good at that. So I could be wrong. I just know that mine didn't stay together very well. And like that bait I just showed you that I did make from hair kind of looks like crap in my own opinion. So then you have this flashy stuff and then you can just wrap this wire around it. I haven't done much roll fishing, to be honest. Like the only time I fished with roll, I bought the bags already made. I know a lot of people do that though and make their own bags. I know a lot of people are going to bed now. I've been live for a while. Let me keep wrapping this up. And you get a nice chunk. Then you tie it off. 
Yeah, I saw Rip and Tiff's bag to video to make roll bags. They don't look that hard to make. I know they're really popular in the spring for rainbow trout. So then we're gonna cut this off and give it a couple knots and then we'll be done. But yeah, the trout just are like reaction striking at the and at eggs from other trout, so they're eating they'll eat raw. I'm not very good at doing this whole last blur making thing because I'm a disorganized mess. At least I can edit out my disorganized hot mess part when I'm not live. Oh, thanks, Jet Wash. I don't know if I'll still be live. I'll. I appreciate you for showing up. So then I ended up with this spinner that doesn't look so hot. And then I'll just clean it out. And this is like a Cisco or Shag color. And then I'll take my trash can and trim, take this stuff and trim it off even. Lee. And then I'll throw it in the trash. And then I have a spinner here that I made, which I just need to put a treble hook on. And I have this treble hook here, which I think is like a two or four odd. And then I have split rings, which are right here. And I'm going to take this. and take the split rank hook and put it down through here and then take the spinner and find where the hook line goes through And have it right here and then I'm going to twirl it around with the split ring pliers and then I have my hook on this bait right here and then I can go and cast this out and fish with it and here I have like this nickel blue silver spinner I made that the skirt looks horrendous on which I, I might just end up remaking but I guess if it looks bad I'll just remake a skirt on it. I don't know how. I probably won't even fish with this spinner at all. Yeah, it, it could look better, though. I didn't get the skirt cut evenly because I didn't have it sent out to get the space just right. It doesn't really fix on the skirt ever. This is just like a flashy material. This is actually knockoff flash. Like, I'll show you the flash. Like, the double cowgirls come with another type of flash. Like most of the flash baits they have have this finer flash, which is really pricey though, because they sell like a bunch of it, which is enough to make like one spinner for like five, six dollars. Whereas I got that stuff I have in my box for that I was just using for like a dollar for a whole bunch of it. Like, this is a blue fox version of a musky bait. It's been casted a bit, so it's kind of all raveled up. So usually for my spinners, I just make them out of plastic like this here. Like this spinner, I think I cut a musky on. Because it's easier. So that's just what I've done, though. Like, I don't know. I think each of the things has their own advantage. Like the hair, plas the plastic wears out, polished steel wool should work. I've never thought about trying that. I wonder what they think of the texture or something.
But that might work. I don't really know. But here's like the black and orange spinner bait I made. Here's a crankbait I tried making. It acting's kind of funky. I haven't caught anything on it though. But I made this out of wood. My painting skills are not very good though. Once we get our basement cleaned out, I was gonna make like a jerk, make a video of making like a wooden bait like this one, or like a knockoff of a refog like this one here. So I was thinking about making something like that. So yeah, these are big lures. I'm getting really disorganized here and I'm just rambling on about stuff. It came out, it didn't go out to the barb. That'd be a pretty funny live stream if I actually hooked myself. I know the one day I was talking to my roommate and I was showing him some of the big versions of this bait that I have, like they're the, like the Meg version, and I like just got had them brand new, and the guy had the hooks really sharp, and it just went into the top of my thumb right here, and then I just started bleeding like crazy, which is unfortunate, but that's what happens. <laughs> yeah it does it looks kind of funky yeah i think i should probably stop this live stream and clean off my bag because there's baits everywhere This would look more like something like this, this bait, or this other bait here. This one. I have way too many baits. Like some of these baits I never even use. Hi, Kelsey. How are you doing? Thanks for stopping by. You missed me almost hooking myself in the butt. I've been live for quite a while now. I'm ready for the zombie invasion. My dad's actually worrying about the zombie invasion and he has like a whole collection of things. So, he is like, is, <laughs> Kelsey, if we're still here, we were talking about, you're glad you don't have to sleep in that bed tonight. Yeah, we were just talking about you getting hooked when you came over here. <laughs> I really need to clean up the hooks in our room. There may actually be a few dangling around on the floor. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to start cleaning out this base. We're just opening. You better, I'm going to give you these swimming flukes, Kelsey. You better catch a fish on them. I can't wait to take some fishing videos with you. Hey, T Shine sixty six. 
Yeah, that is one way to spice things up. That'll be a little too wild, I think. We got all this flashy tape for in here, too. Look at how nice light flashes off of this. <laughs> so much stuff in here. Hey, Chips Outdoor Channel. How are you doing tonight? I was just making some baits and talking about them. And people just keep coming in, like, right as I going, was going to end. Like, I made this spinner and, oh, Wild Man. Hey, I think my dad is home, and I want to talk to them. So I'm going to go. You guys all have a nice day. So it was nice chatting with all of you. You all have a nice day. I'm going to go. Thank you guys all for coming.